Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. I've made a few videos on tape dictaphones and how I use them. I enjoy the lo-fi quality and texture these machines impart to any signal you record with them. It feels like a secret or a memory and it's very easy to work something beautiful out of them musical wise. One of the most frequent questions I got from you is what dictaphone I recommend. So I've assembled my collection and I'm going to talk a bit about what I recommend. <laughs> Basically get any cheap dictaphone, any you can find for like three, five, maximum 10 bucks at a thrift store or a flea market, get it. The texture and the sound you'll get will always be useful and you can never have enough of these because they break after some time and nobody is building them anymore. That said, there are some things that I look for when I'm buying a dictaphone. Look at the micro cassette ones. Here I've got two Zenyu talk books, a Panasonic, a Sony and the latest acquisition uh, Sony of the last series that they ever did the mic and micro which is the only one that breaks with the traditional form factor first of all the Sanyos now these to me are the perfect live devices because all controls are laid out nicely on one side so you can play it with just your thumb you've got record here you've got play you've got stop and the fast forward and rewind and also the all important speed control that's something i would say look for in any dictaphone you buy that has tape um, have two speeds to record on 2.4 centimeters and 1.2 centimeters is the norm so this enables you to take a signal such as this and play it back at half speed Even with something as tiny as a microcassette, slowing down tape is still a magical operation. Next up, a later talk book. This one adds fast play, which is really handy because now you've got two speeds to record on and you get another speed for playback. So you can take the signal, play it back at half speed and then play it back a little faster so you get more range out of the signal and also of course you can play it back super fast now on the Sanyos the fast play option is not as fast as on the Sony's for example take this one it looks the same the form factor is almost identical microphone is in the same position but you've got the speed on the opposite side, which is something I don't enjoy as much for playing live because you have to look for it and you need two hands and that's not as intuitive as on the talk box. But the sound on these is rather good. Less noise. And a bit cleaner. And this one wobbles nicely at a slower speed. Probably the belts are leaving us here. Now, sonically, the one that differs the most is the Panasonic. This one has a nice warm sound to it, almost no high end. It feels like it's been low pass filtered, so it's already more mellow than the other ones. This becomes noticeable, especially once you plug it into a mixer. It also has fast play, so three speeds, a very handy machine. The lack of high frequencies can also be a minus point as it leaves you with less options to edit later. But it's a nice color to have. So this one, the odd one out, the Sony mic and me. Kind of interesting because of course this microphone will react much better to anything you throw at it. It's also much harder to distort this so it's easier to record um, something like a piano that has a sharp attack as all these will rather quickly distort on transients 
this not so much but the problem is it's not really clandestine so when you're using it to record something in public you will draw attention the sound of it on recording is very good but else it's a micro cassette so all that big big uh, mic um, will end up crushed by the general sound of micro cassette So I consider this one more of an oddity and I probably won't carry it around with me due to its size. Now let's move on to regular cassette dictaphones. These are of course bigger, heavier, they also make more motor noise, so the internal mic will pick that up more easily, but the general sound of these is better because you've got a bigger tape to work with. As you can see, I put a loop tape in here. So this one is also a talk book. It follows the same form factor. You've got all the controls that are important under thumb control. You've got the two speeds and you've got a nice big loudspeaker here. Oy, oy, oy. But what you can't do, which is crucial, is you can't forward and listen back at the same time. So with this one, you win some and you lose some. Next up, we've got the Panasonic RQL31. Now I had high hopes for this one, but they have been kind of crushed because this has one unique option. It can go three times as slow. And the thing about the three times as slow option is it's really wobbly. So it's hard to keep anything in tune, but still it does sound nice sometimes. Have a listen. This example actually sounds really nice. So I might rejudge this one. One of the rare things with dictaphones is this has two settings for the microphone gain, high and low, which is really helpful if you want to record a quiet or a hot signal. Moving on, we've got this beautiful Sony TCM 450 and it's one of the nicer ones that I have. It's all metal and it sounds beautiful. at both speeds the recording quality is actually pretty good and you've got a lovely speed control here that's very playable so you can put on a chord here and play it like this maybe This is one that I enjoy a lot. The last one in my collection is the General Electric Fast Rack. This is a big machine with nice buttons and a microphone that's surprisingly sensitive. Listen to the piano loop in this track. You can hear my daughter shouting Papa, but she is a floor downstairs. This is something I wouldn't have expected a dictaphone to pick up. Curiously, the fast track doesn't have half speed, but it has a pitch shifter that's digital and a speed control. So you can do some things with it. One thing I like to do is make my voice sound more sexy. I've been talking about dictaphones all day. I could use some coffee and cake. Mmm, cake. I've been talking dictaphones all day. I could use a coffee and a glass of water. And maybe some cake. Mmm, cake. I've been talking to the fans all day. I could use a coffee or a glass of water. Maybe some cake. Yeah, so you can all kinds of different voices with this. Surprisingly, with music, the pitch shifter doesn't work as well. It tends to glitch a lot. 
so this is more of a specialty device. I love making effects with it or recording with it and then using a different player that can actually do half speed to pitch down. So now that I have all of these assembled here, why not make music using all of them? I'm going to record the same piano phrase on all of these at the same time, using loop tapes for the regular cassette ones and non-loop tapes for the micro cassette ones. Then I'm going to assemble a piece by playing back these recorders at different times and mixing together with the Coma Field Kit and the Field Kit effects and maybe some post-processing. So let's get to it.
That was fun to make. As you can see, I had a few speeds available because, for example, this recorder, I recorded it at the lower speed and then I was able to pitch it up, which gave me some nice sparkly tones. While the Panasonic excelled at the low rumble that could sometimes get a little bit dissonant. I had recorded some kind of mistake take on this one, which was also nice because it added a different texture. You could hear like the rewinding of stuff and some more clicky sounds, so that was interesting. And yeah, the dictophones all worked fine. On the final mix, I added a bunch of reverb from two of my favorite machines, the Dynacord VRS23 and the Alesis Quadraverb. That's it for this video. I hope it helped a bunch of you out. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.